Now in its 10th year, this is GabNet. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, everybody. Live from Harlem in New York City. Yes, it's the Ramble with me, Alex Bennett. Talking to us from indoors because it's windy, right? Down there in, down there in FLA, Florida. And here's Lori Thompson once again. Yay. Hello, Hi. Lori. How are you? Jazz hands. Yeah, jazz hands. Hey, how's your life been going down there in Florida? It's going well. Um, you know, we've been traveling so much, and I'm not bitching about it. Um, it's just kind of nice to be home for a stretch. So you end up doing all the things that you couldn't do when you're on a big ship. Let me ask you a question about you know, today, for instance, I was looking at a tour of uh, the Mediterranean uh, yes. on Virgin, and it's a big ship, and the one thing, though, that they say is no kids. We, you know, you'd like that. Now, kids, as a rule, uh, on the cruises we take now, if you went on Margaritaville, you would encounter kids, kids, kids. It's a floating amusement park on Mar Margaritaville. Right, exactly. And Carnival, quite a few kids. Um, Princess, some kids, um, like Avalon, Almost well, no this kids. is Virgin, and they say no kids. Yeah, they say put it right up front. Well, that's good. Yeah, so that's the first part. I mean, Marjorie hates the idea of one of these big cruises because she hates so many people. And I tell her that from any, everybody I've talked to that uh -huh. uh, if you take one of those, you don't really feel all those people. You don't. You know, it's like because um, some of these cruise ships are bigger than my hometown. And that's, and I knew everybody in my hometown, so that you eventually could get to know everybody on a on a six thousand ship. Yeah. But, but we don't know, want but, six thousand. I'm sorry. Oh gosh, it's, no. I would go. That's why uh, we love Azamara. Their their crowds tend to be uh, more genteel, mellower, yeah. and uh, but just they keep you entertained. They have you know they. Uh, have all kinds of excursions. You can scuba dive. You can line, zip line. Oh boy, I want to go scuba diving. Yeah, we actually rode horses in the ocean. Actually, I probably do better in water than I'm doing on land now. <laughs> right. Yeah. You can at least float if you get tired. Well, actually, if I could, uh, I should really start swimming. Get that would get the legs going again. You know. That would, and it's such good exercise if you could do one thing: walking too, but. But, swimming. I, I mean, I used to, I was a major swimmer. I used to swim like crazy. Did you really? And then all of a sudden I stopped, you know, because I was nowhere near a pool or water or whatever, and I just... See, access is everything yeah. when it comes to... But when I was a kid, like, I, w I was afraid of swimming. I couldn't uh, get in the water. I was afraid of water because I had almost drowned once. That'll do it for you. <laughs> yeah, that'll do it for you. And so what I did, though is I, uh, uh, somebody finally got sick and tired, I think it was my father, got sick and tired of me being afraid of the water and just took me and pushed me in. <laughs> just here. And I swam to the edge of the pool and I yeah. went, hey, I can swim. <laughs> you know? It's a great feeling and when And then you couldn't, you couldn't get me out of the water. Right. I was underwater. I love going underwater and swimming the length of a pool underwater. It's like I'm in a different world. <laughs> you know, and you begin to you begin to really envy. Uh, 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 what do you call it? Uh, 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 porpoises. Uh, porpoises and people. You know, people. People. Marines. Animals that are in the water. You know. Yeah. I also it's like to be a bird because I I love birds. I mean I. I think they have the best life because they look down on you. Right. Oh, you know. Yes. Which, and I think they can exact revenge because of that. Like, there's, I had to go to Destin this morning, and you have to go along, along a bridge. It's less than two miles, but it's of some length. Yeah. And there was a huge uh, pelican flying over me, 
And I thought, dude, if you get drop a load on me on this day after I lost a good friend, I am just gonna I'm gonna get out and I'm gonna sh throw things at you. Yeah, right. On the bridge. Right. The pelican, but the pelican, his beak holds more than his bellican. Oh that <laughs> did you learn that at camp, at summer camp? I, I knew that one. <laughs> I don't know where I got that one from. No, all the limericks I learned from you are were naughty. No, li uh, that's not a limerick. A limerick no. has a pentameter to it. It's da 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 as she Still walked goes. down the street, the, de uh, the uh, dogs ate the green meat that hung in festoons from her drawers. I know that's the part, the green meat. It's just that you the can't green say meat. it yeah. without thinking about it and, to think it and then thinking of it in the context well, there is, of the story. There, really, there is no such thing as a clean limerick. It's always no. meant to be a body form of poetry. Really? Yes. That, it was, that was his intention? Yeah, I mean, uh, I can't think of any right now. I made up one once for a friend and made it so it was clean. But that's the cleanest I've ever heard any limerick, you know. Yeah, because I, I remember that one about the girl from Azores. Um, <laughs> there was a young woman I knew who closed her vagina with glue. She said with a grin, if they pay to get in, they'll pay to get out of it too. That that's the uh... <laughs> Yes, they all they all involve uh, things in your mid you know. Uh, in usually they torso. have to do with women's vaginas. That's the problem. Yes. Yeah. Snatches play a huge role in limits. Let's talk about something that's been that we may as well this is catharsis for us, you know. Okay. Uh, yeah. we got some news yesterday, uh, that was very distressing to us. Um, I had a producer on and off for many years. Mm -hmm. Period, long period on, then a long period off, then a long period on, and uh, it it uh, I had a kind of semi contentious, but became a really loving relationship. Yeah, with you two person. were fire and ice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was fire and ice. It really yeah. was. Uh, and it, her name was uh, her name at the time was Christy Frazier. That's probably what most people who are watching us who will listen to the morning show at Live 105 uh, or even at the Quake uh, knew her as is Christy Frazier. She then became Christy Andrade, and uh, Christy. I was in her wedding to Andrade. I was a bridesmaid. You were a bridesmaid at that? Yes. Yeah. I didn't behave anything like Melissa McCarthy. Yeah. By that marriage, she had two kids. Right. Yeah. And Joe and Nick. Yeah. yeah. And, were great boys. And uh, uh, when I first met her, uh, I, I met her at the Quake. Uh, you couldn't avoid her. She was probably, I would say, one of the most stunning looking women I've ever seen in my life. Gorgeous. She was part Portuguese and she was gorgeous she was absolutely ravishing mm -hmm. um, so much so that everybody who ever came into the studio either hit on her or just stared at her yeah exactly you know uh, yeah and she uh, what she got the nickname boom boom well oh, I, I came was, I gave her that name you did I think she so she was anatomically very blessed yes yeah, she was incredibly blessed uh, blessed <laughs> But, <laughs> there. I didn't mean to say that. <laughs> Freudian slip, Freudian lingerie. She she was well endowed, but endowed. also forget it. Her face, she was just gorgeous, exquisite, just absolutely, yeah. absolutely and, exquisite. Yeah. And even and, as years went on, and I knew her, she really stayed rather ravishing looking. She was she a, aged just, a, quite well. Quite well. Until the later years when she came down with uh, breast cancer, oddly enough. Yeah. Uh, and even uh, even through the early stages of that, she was still yeah. beautiful. I just saw a picture that her uh, husband uh, pu published uh, of her recently, and it doesn't look a lot like her. You She's know? so thin. 
She's yeah. just so thin yeah. in it. And yeah. cancer will do to people. Yeah. And anyway, she's battled cancer for about the last uh, six or seven. seven years, I think it said. Yeah. Uh, and her husband, uh, Sam uh, Wilmore. Whit Whitmore. Whitmore. Uh -huh. Whitmore. He has a media service. Sam Whitmore. Uh, uh, what was I going to say about Sam Whitmore? Outside of she married days. him. Yeah, that she was married her last. Him. They actually came here and stayed here at least yeah. once, maybe two times. And yeah. I, they were, he was really a great guy. You know, she had yeah. finally wound up with a good husband. You know? Yes, that's what we do. That's you what know. we wanted. And, and for. a marriage that lasted a long time. 20 years, huh? maybe. Um, 20, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, um, yeah, because they came through hometown. Yeah. And my parents had a house in Clinton where they lived, but they had a condo in Bloomington, the boom town. And they stayed there for a week. And we got to hang out and went to female roller derby, went to rodeos. We went to everything yeah. that the Midwest has to offer. But I always nicknamed people. I think I nicknamed her Boom Boom. I didn't remember that, but. She, she told me about it. I never knew her as the boom twice, but I uh, was told that that was her nickname, that perhaps you had a hand in it. Yes. Yeah, but and I wasn't referring to the uh, uh, accoutrement. <laughs> I was um, I was actually just relating to just hey boom boom as she's you know yeah. yeah. But anyway, uh, we got news yesterday that she had died. Yeah, and she was sixty one. She was young, you know. Yeah, and she, I mean, you. I met her through you. She yeah. was your producer, and yeah. I can still remember the first time we were all together. Yep. And, you know, I had met her and thought, she, man, she's great. And uh, then we all were together for the first time, and we, ne you know, had never been all of us together. And I thought, this is, this could be fun. This yep. could be fun. Yep. So you know, uh, that was, uh, uh, and she she followed me over to Live One Hundred and Five, where you met yeah. her, where you met. Yes. Her. Uh -huh. And she was my producer for about a year. Mm -hmm. I got rid of her because here, here was the problem. Number one, she was young. She was maybe at the, by the time you met her, twenty-two. Okay, a little older than not, that. Not, yeah. not, not a lot of experience in producing a show. And what happens sometimes with people who produce a show and it's the first time they've ever done it, they become terribly protective of it. Yes. You know. Yeah. More so than I'm even protective of it, and I'm the one who's <laughs> supposed to be protective of it, right? Mm -hmm. And she was very protective of it, and at one point, I was doing the show one day, and during a break, and you may even remember it, she came in and started yelling at me about something I had done, and said, you do this, you shouldn't be doing this, Alex, and she's yelling at me and screaming at me, and the audience is all, you know. <laughs> they and probably th thought, window seat. And the guests are looking at each other like, you know, what's this about? And after it was over, I went to the boss. I said, I think we got we got to get rid of her. She's she's taken too too much possession of the show. <laughs> and so she was pregnant at the time. So I got them to not fire her, but to simply move her laterally <laughs> to something else. Okay. Yeah, I remember that. I remember it. Yeah. And uh, then she started working with our office manager, who she adored, Ross, and uh, it, it seemed to work out. It was it, it was pretty smooth. And then, um, you know, she had the baby. You've never seen someone snap back into shape so fast. I mean, boom, she had the baby, and then, like, the next day, she was back to her original <laughs> curves. Amazing. It's amazing. But, yeah. but I, and I didn't feel good about that, but I didn't feel bad either because I had to do a show and I couldn't, didn't just, it was very embarrassing to have this thing happen. So, yeah. Between that time and the next time I met up with her was quite a period of time. I think you probably you stayed at uh, Live 105 after I left, right? I lived at Live 105 from my 20s to my almost 40s. Let's see. And then I came back. I don't know if she was there at that time. I don't think she was. No, she wasn't. Um, she worked at CNET, which is where she met her husband. Oh, no, no, wait a minute. Uh, CNET was also me. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's, then, let's take it in order here. So okay. I didn't see her for, or hear from her for a couple of years at least. And I had mm -hmm. gone, I had finally gone through the coming back to Live 105 and then no longer being at Live 105. 
Yeah. And my friends at Play Incorporated wanted to hire me to run their their Play TV. They wanted mm -hmm. to try a live TV program every day or programs every day for about twelve yeah. hours. Um, to kind of showcase this piece of equipment they were trying to sell. A toaster. The, the, no, no, this wasn't the toaster. This was the uh, the uh, Trinity, they called it. Oh, yeah. They yeah, had so many things. It was a big box. The, the toaster, they did it New Tech, and it was a small card. This was a big box. Yeah. Uh, but anyway. They were innovators. Yeah, for sure. Anyway, so I went, uh, I was working out of Sacramento for a short time and also out of my apartment. And finally, we we're going to start doing all these shows. And I get a call from Christy, and she says to me, Hi, I haven't talked to you in a couple of years. She said, The reason I'm calling is I'm calling everybody I know. She said, I just left my husband. I need a job. Uh, do you know of anything? I said, Would you mind working with me again? She said, No. <laughs> I said, Good, let me see what I can get you here. So we hired her on as a producer out of my apartment, out of my office, in a second apartment that we used as a studio in the office. Right. And she literally yeah, ran the office and everything for about a year until that came mm -hmm. to an end. And so I, you know, I helped her get out of the house and then get rid of her husband. Yeah, because that was a trauma. Like I say, yeah. I, I remember the night she met him and felt she was smitten quite quickly and uh then i also was in their wedding and uh then i they came to the, my house in san mateo with dr greenblatt a couple times mm -hmm. and uh then all of a sudden i was hearing about these infidelities that had been going on not on her part but yeah. on the part of um her first husband yeah. who was a good enough guy but you know a lot of people infidelity is just a part of their first marriage that that happens you know yeah um and they fucked me. But anyway, she came to work for me there, and I don't know how long that lasted. Maybe a year, maybe a little longer than that, you know. Mm -hmm. But she ran the office and she produced the show, and uh, uh, she was like, uh, and did a great job, just a yeah, great job. You know, she had matured, and she had changed, and uh, you know, she wasn't, you know, she wasn't as critical of me. You know, mm -hmm. and things like that, and uh, not because she because she was afraid I'd fire her again or anything like that, but just no, because. But she gained perspective. But she had that. also gained maturity in how to handle the job and so on. Because you know the nature of the job of being producer is, uh, you have no other duty but to take care of me, to make yeah. sure I look good, you know. Yes. Yeah. You know, so, but anyway, she we had a great relationship there, and then. Uh, uh, Play Incorporated went bankrupt, and I went over to CNET, <laughs> and I needed a producer. So I hired her over as a producer there. So now she was my f following producer, you know, would follow me everywhere <laughs> I went. And eventually, after about a year there, I got let go, but they didn't let her go, which was fine, and she spent the Many years I've seen it. Right, that's yeah. where she met her uh, husband. Met her current husband. Yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, she, uh, uh, so she stayed there. And then uh, the next time I heard from her, we were living here in New York. <clears throat> and she and her husband were moving from California up to Maine, I think it mm -hmm. was. And they, they stayed with us for a couple of days. And we kept in contact. And then all of a sudden we lost contact. It was like, I would hear from her all the time, and then all of a sudden she wouldn't write anymore. And I think that had something to do with the fact that she had cancer. I definitely think so, because we, at the beginning of this year, um, had a, a series, a real fun exchange of phone calls, like almost every week for mm -hmm. about, um, let's say, a month and a half, two months. And uh, she mentioned that it was difficult uh, to call people because the cancer then becomes the only topic. And half the time she just wanted to laugh. And uh, so that's where... Well, that, that, that's what I assume now in retrospect is that she didn't want to talk to anybody because that would eventually come up in the conversation and she didn't want to talk about it. 
Right, because she knew about it. She lived it every day, just a break. And that's why um, we had a lot of discussions. We used to go out to lunch. I mean, sometimes you'd take us out to lunch. We'd go to the Altamira with a great view. Sometimes, yeah. but she and I went to lunch almost every day. And there was a place called the Patio in the Castro, and we'd drink copious mimosas and discuss very metaphysical things. And so when I heard that she had passed away, because of some of these very epic discussions that we had, um, I didn't think of her as dying as much as just graduating, maybe, uh, passing on, that's to use a more common phrase, but uh, knowing her views on the afterlife, I, I, I didn't have, see, but we couldn't have those kind of conversations. I wouldn't broach them when she had cancer, because now we were talking about something that was not just abstract, it was, it was gonna a, happen. A, a reality, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it 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 just grieved me a great deal because I always remember her as a terribly sweet woman. Oh, and, more and and, and and a good person and somebody that uh, I had a content, contentious relationship at one point, but it was a professionally contentious relationship. Yeah. Nothing personal. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and she. Uh, 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 you know, she she meant a lot to me. She really did. When I heard that she died, it just, you know, especially at sixty one. Come on, you know. Yeah. You still got some it's years left to have some fun. And she yeah. finally met a wonderful guy. I mean, Sam's a wonderful guy. She was crazy, but they were crazy about each other. Yeah. See, I still don't feel comfortable talking about her in the past tense because I feel knowing her yeah. views. Well, afterlife. I wrote him a uh, an email uh, expressing my condolences, sadness over his uh, his loss. I didn't. I did, I really do not use that term. I'm sorry for your loss. I just, you know, because when my father died, my mother died. I got so sick of people coming up to me and saying, "I'm so sorry for your loss." I know they yeah. have nothing. It's a very awkward situation, and they don't have anything else to say that way. But yeah. I, I didn't want to say that, so I wrote him and I said, I know that you've had a lot of people say things wonderful about her and so on, and I'm sure all I have to say is that uh, you know she meant a lot to me, and uh, and I I can understand your your grief at this moment. I, I whatever I wrote. And he wrote back and said, if it weren't for you, I never would have met Christy. He said, because that's I became... Right. What? What were you going to say? That's right, because of the CNET connection. Yeah. That's when he came into contact with her. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, if you, uh, you know, my life might have turned out differently if you hadn't done what you did, you know. Yeah. So I, I, was, I thought that was very nice of him to write back. Very classy. You know, at a time now, like this. I don't have much contact information for him, but I sent uh, emails to her sons, Nick and Joe. And yeah, so, uh, if you uh, if uh, if you go to his website, do you know his website? Yeah. Uh, just look up Sam Whitmore, and it goes to his website, and then on a page about about or something, it has his email address at the bottom. I give it to you, but I don't want to give. It, I'll give it to you when we're in the in the break between okay. these things. Okay. Yeah. Because, uh, yeah, it was just the first time ever in my life, even when my mom died, that I can remember looking at the phone and just hollering, no, 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 for about, seemed like five minutes, much less probably. Well, but I, was I mean, just like, it, it, couldn't it, believe it. you know, again, this is not a person who was not part of my life, okay? Or, right. You know, they say, oh, so-and-so, such and such a comedian died and the guy was a guest on my show once you know <laughs> yeah. uh, but this is somebody who's meant a lot to me in my life yeah. and it's just another one gone it's just another person to check off you know it's bizarre too because I mean she was the first probably BFF that I had in San Francisco when she would invite me to their home you know, uh, for Christmas because my family wasn't didn't live out there. I had yeah. the family out, yeah. and just a genuinely warm. So, if Christian everybody person. can understand this, you can you can get a small idea of how much Lori and I have uh, are affected by this. You know, yeah. uh, because it isn't just a passing friend. You know, right. somebody, someone that was in well every day. 
every day. When did I meet her? Maybe 1974, something like that? 75? It would have been, uh, no, it would have been later than that. It would have been um, seven, early 70s. Early 70s, I'm saying 70, yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's... I mean, I'm sorry, early 80s, I think. That's how many, I mean, no. that's how many years no. ago? No, no, I, are, yeah, not no early, you would know better than I. Wait um, a early 80s, wait a minute, 70s? Mid, oh, yeah, I was, here, I was in New York in the 70s. I was in San Francisco in the 80s. Mm -hmm. so it was about 84, 83 mm -hmm. that I first yeah. met her at the quake. Yeah, then and, we uh, worked together in 86. And that's how many years ago? Yeah. Many. <laughs> many, many decades. Yeah, you know. math doesn't really flatter us at this age. No, so I avoid it. Neither does anything else, but you know. <laughs> hey, listen, we've run out of time, but I'm glad we could do this little tribute to a really wonderful woman who uh, meant a lot to us. You yes. Know? And I'm sure people who listen to the radio show in San Francisco know who I'm talking about Christy Frazier, later Andrade, and finally Whitmore, and uh, died a happy woman, I think. Oh, yeah. You know? She, her life had resolved itself very nicely. Great kids, great husband. Yeah. Beautiful place anyway, to live. I'll talk to you next week. How's that? That sounds lovely. Lori Thompson. Now in its 10th year, this is GabNet. Talk like you've never heard it before. And there we go with Lori Thompson once again. Always a pleasure to talk to Lori. I'm not under under pleasant circumstances this week, but uh, uh, certainly we want to take our time to at least for one episode with her, do a tribute to uh, Christy Frazier, who uh, meant a lot to to us, uh, meant a lot to her, and meant a lot to me. Uh, it, it was an evolving kind of relationship that that uh, Christy and I had, and then towards the end of her life. Uh, we completely resolved. I mean, I it re resolved it when I uh, hired her on it to play TV, and she just, you know, she went from the early days of kind of not being a great producer because she was too she was too wrapped up in the show. You know, she so felt she owned part of it that she, you know, she took was was possessive of it. And she, by the time came to me at play TV, she had matured phenomenally. And literally was a savior to me. She ran the office. She she produced the show. Uh, she uh, she was a real real uh, became a real professional. And uh, after that point, and then I brought her over to um, CNET as well. And after all of that, um, we uh, kind of parted ways because we uh, uh, we weren't working with each other anymore. But she stayed at CNET and was there for I think. God, I can't tell you how many years uh, she was at CNET and uh, found a place there. And then when she was at CNET, she met her husband, her current husband, and uh, uh, Sam, who's a wonderful guy. And he wrote me a note today. He said, if it weren't for you, I probably never would have met her because, you know, I, I, I was listening to you at, uh, at CNET, and then I kind of looked her up, you know, and... Uh, turned into a wonderful thing and I'm happy I could be part of that but we're gonna miss her and uh, you know I, we just wanted you to know what a wonderful person had uh, had left our midst at this point and a lot of people are just just sh a lot of people really shocked by it I wasn't shocked by it because I knew she had been ill over the last couple of years she had had uh, uh, problems with uh, 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 what do you call it uh, with uh, uh, breast cancer and I didn't I had heard that it had gotten worse from I think it was Lori a while back so when I heard about it I wasn't that uh, that amazed by it you know uh, but it didn't come as that big a surprise but to other people it did because they didn't even know that was going on because they hadn't talked to her in years but uh, anyway we have two people waiting to come on tonight is it worth doing a show I guess it's worth doing a show. well We'll try it for now, and uh, uh, let's see here. Uh, what do we want to do? Well, we want to uh, 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 bring uh, Zoom on. Okay, there. That's me on Zoom. Okay, 
And then we got to bring the people in on Zoom. Let me see here. Where do I, I'm so out of it today uh, that I got to remember how to go to Zoom. Uh, okay, so we will go to, yes, Zoom there, and we go to Zoom, and then I, I got to click on here to bring these people in. Okay, uh, view, okay, there we go. Okay, here we are. And uh, now uh, we go admit all. There we go. Okay. I'm just a little out of it tonight. Uh, and uh, here is, uh, let's see here, we have uh, t uh, Tom Yamaguchi. Hi, Tom. How are you? Hi. I'm sorry to hear about Christy. I also yeah. knew her, obviously, because I used to be a part of your studio audience. And, yeah. Uh, and uh, you got so that. Yeah. She was always very nice to me. Yeah. Yeah. She was really, really nice. And uh, but how sad, you know, 61. That is awful. Really yeah. horrible. Well, you know. That, I didn't know she had cancer. Yeah, I've known it for about, well, she was had it for about seven years, and I've known about it for about seven years. Okay. But I heard about a third party, uh, or second party, or whatever party. Um, it's no party. Uh, but uh, I, I've heard, I heard about it kind of uh, second party. Uh, hand uh, because once you got cancer we have been in a lot of contact with each other Marjorie was friends with her talking to her writing her back and forth and all of a sudden she stopped writing mm -hmm. and she stopped uh, 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 communicating with us and I think part of that is is that when you get something like that maybe you just don't want to talk about it you know and so you avoid even talking to people period rather mm -hmm. than uh, dealing with it and uh, I uh, but I always she was always in my mind and I was always thinking about her and I heard about this illness I can't remember through who but somebody it might have been Lori uh, told me that she had come down with breast cancer this was several years ago was seven years ago and apparently she got rid of it but then it came back there was some other you know complication uh, and uh, it's just, you know, it's sad because, it's, again, it's somebody I know, somebody who was very important, an important part of my life, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. And, and uh, here we go. Bye. See you later. Another one. Gone. Uh, too young. Huh? Far too young. Far too <laughs> young. Far too young. 61. Uh, but, uh, uh, and her husband, she had a wonderful, she, her, her final years were good years for her because she had a wonderful husband. I I really liked the guy, you know. I said that to Marjorie after they came over and spent a weekend here or something. And I said to Marjorie, I said, boy, he's a nice guy. Yeah, he's terrific. Harry Smalls. Who is Harry Smalls? Oh, that got to be a fake name. Got to be a fake name. <laughs> Shall I put my picture on here for a second? Let's see who Harry Smalls is. Admit. Oh, we have to look at this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and uh, Harry Smalls, and uh, it's not going to be, there's no such guy as Harry Smalls, right? He's going to show us something uh, Well, disgusting. Derek Smalls was a character on Spinal Tap. Yeah, well, Harry Smalls. Uh, Hello. Uh, uh, how do I get rid of him here? Uh, well, what did I do? Hello. He said, he said he's talking. Oh, we well, know, if you have no picture, we can't see you. We, we can't see. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah. Well, why aren't we seeing a, a picture on you? My uh, my camera's not working at the moment. Well, uh, then we really can't uh, talk with you, to tell you the truth. It doesn't. Okay, uh, I'm sorry. I can leave. Okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Okay. Bye. Uh, let's see here. Uh, oh, there we go. He actually went away, folks. Okay. I figured his camera was going to work about any second now, and he was going <laughs> <laughs> to... Yeah, when well, you least, least expect it, yeah. yeah. It sounds like a version of Harry Balls, doesn't it? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. well, you know. No, but anyway, so we were... I, I heard about this... Uh, uh, Chuck Farnham wrote, call, uh, wrote me a note and said she had died. And I wasn't too sure he was right, and he wasn't even 100% sure he was right, although he heard it from what he considered a good source. Mm -hmm. So I started checking it out, and I went to her husband's uh, website, and yeah. there was a notice there that she had died. So, 
It's yeah. not easy, I'm sure. At, at, not that I'm being ageist, but at your age, you see a lot of friends die. You know, Unfortunately. When you, get, when you get into your 80s, most people don't live into their 80s. So you're going to see a lot of your friends die, unfortunately. Well, you know, I mean, we have to admit that that's, that's always a possibility. You know? Part of life. You know? Well, you, of life. You, live, you live long, and uh, you're going to see people around you go, you know. And uh, I, I'm tired of it, kind of. It makes me, bothers me. I wish people would keep living a little longer. <laughs> You know, so maybe I should just make younger friends or something. But then they, they, there's no telling when you die anyway. So, you know, and they'll be sad when we die. So, maybe. yeah, I guess, I guess. Well, yeah, maybe. Yeah, you know, well, you'll be bored of me by the time I die. So, you know. uh, you'll be around another ten or fifteen years. I doubt that. You're too abstract for us, you know. You gotta. <laughs> you gotta keep us going. Yeah, I don't know. The, I, I I don't feel. What's what? How do I what? How do I put this? I, you know, I mean, I don't feel a hundred percent well, but maybe that's maybe it's something I'm not used to, and that's called age. You know, and as you age, you you there's certain things that don't work as well as they used to. So, anyway. Oh, isn't that the truth? <laughs> Speak for yourself. Yeah. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> but um, anyway, you know. Well, I've had a fun couple days. Hmm? I've had a fun couple days after owning my HP printer two years. Mm -hmm. I want to cancel my HP Plus. Oh. And they just, for the first time in two years, sent me brand new cartridges. And if I cancel my HP Plus, the cartridges brick. They no longer become. Yeah, they don't work. They turn it off. Yeah. Right. So you, now you now I got to go out. I've spent this seven dollars and some change for eighteen months because the first six months were free, and now I got to go out and buy brand new ink cartridges for this thing or get a new printer. Well, here's what happens with HP, and this is why I I had an HP printer that was working, you know, uh -huh. and then the one of the uh, cartridges went out, as you say. And I tried to replace it with one of the, uh, you know, phony cartridges, uh, you know, yeah, that won't work. Uh, and and those don't work. Uh, so uh, I uh, I decided that I just didn't like uh, any of them. Okay, uh, and uh, I didn't. Uh, um, excuse me. Somebody. This guy is trying to sign in over and over again with <laughs> different names and. You know, I'm not supposed. I, I, you know, I can't. I'm not supposed to get used to them. Let's see, but I, I keep looking. Uh, oh, Olivia Madison. Every anybody know an Olivia Madison? I don't. No. Uh, terrible about the thing about this is I would really like to be able to say to people, hey, you know, I, uh, I, I really want you to call our show and then just have people call the show. But you know, this is the reason we don't get anybody new. Is because we're stuck with we're not stuck with you guys, but I, you, I'm, I have to put you on because for sure because I know who you are. But yeah. when they start putting on these phony names, you know, I'm not gonna. Respond, maybe so. maybe you should get a producer to screen your calls. <laughs> well, but there's no way to screen calls doing uh, doing uh, Zoom. Okay. Well, you have a you you can have a waiting room, you know, like you can have different rooms, and your producer could have you know could I don't take think, the, no, the calls and then transfer them to your room. No, you can't do that with the really no. Because I do I do work on with, with Zoom conferences all the time to do that. Hmm. hmm. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how to how you do that or how that even works. Yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> hey, well, let's go back to your HP printer. My HP. Oh, back to, <laughs> back to the HP printer. Um, so I uh, I just decided to hell with it, and I threw my I I took my printer. My printer is still sitting out in the foyer here, uh, and I should really just throw it out. I it was perfectly working if I wanted to use their ink cartridges. But if I didn't want to use their ink cartridges, I couldn't use secondhand ink cartridges 
because they wouldn't work no matter how hard you try and here's what happens when you first sign in when you first get your HP printer and if you get an HP printer listen to me folks do not under any conditions uh, say that you want to uh, what is it there's something you have to do sign up for the HP you sign plus. up for the HP plus because they say oh you get better service and you get get better subscriptions and things like that well what it also does is it locks in the machine to only use HP printer cartridges mm -hmm. if you don't sign that up for that the HP plus you can use the secondhand cartridges so don't ever sign up for the HP plus well I made that mistake and I was locked in so finally I just said to hell with it I, I don't care if it's gonna cost me more I went out and I bought a, uh, what is it I have here, uh, uh, Epson, with the uh, ink uh, tanks. That's and, what I got. And, and the, the, the ink is cheap, and there's a ton of it. I mean, I, I filled this thing up when I first got the machine maybe six, eight months ago, and it's only still half empty, you know? Uh, and then if I want to fill it up, you just go ahead and get these things, and you just pour them in there. You know, and it's it it's the best way to go, because H yeah exactly that's exactly what it is. You don't know the model number by any chance? I'm going to write it down. And when HP, yeah, they've got bunches of lawsuits over this, and I've got a they're supposed to call me on and, uh, and with the tech support has been escalated uh, to somebody that's going to probably tell me, hey, tough shit, but. If you have an Epson model number, then I'll just throw this thing out. No, they, there's any, the Epson. Basically, it's the Epson. It's the only ones that are out there. Okay, know? and it has a tank on it. And you it has you a, rebuild the, the little tanks, okay. No, you don't rebuild the tanks. What happens is it has a refill, tank. Refill, refill. Refill them. And yeah. you just, uh, you just uh, yeah. And uh, as I say, I can't believe how long this ink goes. Mm -hmm. You know. Um so uh, now here's somebody called admin. Oh, oh, all oh, these people are just trying like crazy. You're nuts. You know, don't waste your time, because you're not wasting my time. I don't care. <laughs> you know, I just remove you, and you can waste your time. And from here on in, if anybody calls, unless I know your name and I know who you are, uh, I won't. Uh, I won't accept it. Okay. So don't waste your time. You're going to be just sitting there doing nothing. I would, I would have expected your HP printer to go out the eighth floor store, right? <laughs> well, you know, no, I, I have it sitting there in case somebody wants it, you know. But they're, they're going to have to, and you're going to have to pay for those ink cartridges, which, you know, are like 100 bucks a piece or something. They're ridiculous, yeah. mm -hmm. you know. So it's... Uh, it really is not uh, not a good thing. So it's 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 sad. But so you so what were you doing with yours this week? I, just, I, after two years, I want to shut it off. I don't want to get it. I just got brand new inkjet cartridges sent to me by HP because it took me two years to go through the cartridges, and they just sent me new ones. And I said, well, you know, now I really don't want it anymore. Well, guess what? The brand new ones that are filled up become bricked basically. And why are they bricks? Buy. Wait, why do they become bricks? Because you can't use them because you're no longer on HP Plus. They're, they're programmed for the program. So now you can go out, if I want, even though I paid for these for the past 18 months mm -hmm. to get them, now I've got to go out and throw those away and buy brand new ones that are not part of the program. And you're right, you have to buy HP. You can't use the generics. Right, but you can use the generics if you didn't sign up for the HP Plus. No, I'm, I'm a dummy. And, and why, why somebody, I mean, obviously people are suing them over this. You Lots know. of lawsuits, actually. And, and yet none of them have come to fruition? I, I don't know, I didn't go that far. Uh, uh, Wayne says that they're called Eco Tank Series. The what? Eco Tank. E Eco Tank Series. You're yeah. absent. Right. It's called a Kiko? Eco. 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 Like, e e oh, like Eco Tank. Tank. Yeah, Eco Tank. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, that's the main one they have, you know, so. 
Right, right. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna look into that if I want to stay with it. I was looking for a laser no. printer, black and white. But the trouble is, is that they're they're bigger in footprint size than I have room to set them. And, and you know something? You really don't want them. Those you want to talk about expensive ink? Yeah. yeah. You know that's expensive. Those color cartridges. Wow. Yep. Yeah. Years ago, when HP made the first laser printers you remember the first laser printers guys yep. they were incredible and so incredible they never broke they never went bad yeah what they never went bad alex no they never went bad plain and simple and uh, they went out of business because nobody ever had to buy new ones well what happened was <laughs> i had one and it never went bad I had it for like five years. I wanted a newer printer. You know, they were making them better and faster and things like that. But no, I still had this printer. And the guys supposedly at companies and stuff where they had a, uh, these printers so wanted to get new printers that in order to get their company to buy a new one, they threw like uh, paper clips into the thing and did everything they could to make it break because they, they, they just lasted forever. Now that that's not true anymore, but uh, I got to tell you, we've had this, uh, you know, this uh, new printer, this Epson uh, e EcoPrint, and uh, it's worked perfectly. You know, no problems yeah. at all. Very few okay. jams and stuff like that. But. Okay. But I would just say no. to anybody, do not buy an HP printer. Yeah. Okay. That's right. I would never buy another HP product. Yeah, so, yeah, well, yeah I, 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 I said to the guy, I said, you know, I'm going to make sure that everybody, I'm on, I'm on a couple uh, podcasts, I'm on a, a couple different places, I'm going to make sure everybody knows your policy is to screw the customer. If you want that type of, uh, you know, business, that's fine. And they said, well, let me escalate this up and somebody will get in touch with you. I thought, sure. Well, actually, somebody sent me an email today and said, uh, let them know when I'm convenient, and they'll make time for me, and they'll they'll we'll try and fix this problem. Well, why don't you why don't you let them call you? Why don't you? Let I'm them, going to. I'm you, going to. They're going to call tomorrow afternoon. Let us know what happened. You'll, you'll be our test vehicle on this deal. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, because uh, uh, they're probably going to tell me to go out and buy inkjet cartridges that are not part of the program. So I mean, it's it's also very wasteful because they have. A cartridge that they sent you that's brand new, that's full of ink, and so you're gonna throw that in the trash. If I have to, if they give me a bag, I'm gonna ask them to send me a bag. If they give me a bag, I'm gonna throw it in the bag, and I'm gonna go out and find Tony's dog and pick up a little dog poo and put it in there and send it to him. So they can't, use it, so they can't use it either. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I, it's, it's a horrible policy, and I, I don't know why HP continues to do it. And they've been doing it for years now. It's not like I, they started yeah. this policy yesterday. They've been doing this for years now and just pissing people off. Do they They're really just, want people to be pissed off at their product? Just quickly, I saw five class action lawsuits going on. Really? I didn't look into them closely enough because I had other things going on, but... They have at least five of them going on over this over this uh, plus plan. Look, I understand that they they supply a printer. Maybe they try to supply it at a reasonable price. They paid three hundred bucks for it. Right, it, but you but you're not paying a reasonable price anymore. But you know they figure they'll make the money. It's like the you know the razor with the razor blades. You know. Yeah, and I think in business they call it the codex. Yeah, they clean up on the ink. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah. Uh, they clean up on the ink, and it it, it really shouldn't be. It, 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 and apparently, if they if there are some decent people out there, they'll take care of this in a in a better way. Uh, we'll see what happens. It, it, it's just that it's such bad. Oh, here's Kevin. Let's make sure this is Kevin. Okay, let me just let me let me just. I just want you break it bad again. Huh? I'm what you got me addicted. I'm almost done with Breaking Bad. You're right. Alex. I, I, I'm I'm not, sure. I, I, I don't I don't think we were talking about Breaking Bad. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> Lots of other episode. I'm hoping. Let you me know. see here. Let me just put my picture up here for a second. Let's bring in Kevin. And it's probably Kevin, I would imagine. 
Yeah, yeah, it's Kevin. Yeah. It's Kevin. It's, yeah, it's yeah. Me. yeah, it's it's. Uh, <laughs> hi, Kevin. How are you? Hi, Alex. How are you? How you doing? Good. So you like those? You like those uh, e tanks, don't you? I like you the e tanks. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I told you about I, them for a couple of years, and you never went for you it. Know, and you know, I, I did. I don't know how if they refill well. Because they refill great. Well, wait a minute, because I've never had to refill it. Yeah, it's yeah. Okay. You won't have to for about a year. Yeah. Really? If you're still on your sample, if you're still on your initial tank, you probably won't have to for about a year. I saw it in Costco too, Alex. I was looking at that print there. I was thinking about buying one. Yeah. The, this the, here is the uh, the Epson. I can't recommend enough. You know. That's, yeah, I got the one I saw. They had the Epson when I was checking out. I was looking at it. That's the refill. The ink, you, you get that's the, the refill for fifteen bucks. That's it. And $15? It, that's... you'll fill up the whole tank and have that much left in the bottom. And, it, and I did this probably a year ago. Well, I still mm -hmm. have. I have a. Whole, wow. I bought a, okay. a. I bought a set of theirs because they're cheap too. When you buy the new ink. Yeah, that's the, what I just said. Yeah, that's the what ink, he was just the ink talking is about. Cheap. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I ordered a whole set of those. And I've got them sitting up there waiting to go. And yeah. I got a couple of the blacks, the tanks of black. I did the same thing, thinking I was going to have to use them. And they sat for probably a year and a half. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty good. Yeah. It does. Kevin, how many sheets of and paper then you, you used so far, if you had to guess? Uh, I probably pumped through reams of paper. So yeah. at least 500 sheets already? Oh, at least. Because my, daughter, my daughter prints her stuff on, uh, my daughter prints her stuff for school. Color. I'm going to get one of these and try it out. Yeah. <clears throat> the printers are more expensive, but the ink yeah. is not. That's yeah, yeah I was going to say. That sounds All great. right, good. Thanks for the suggestion, guys. We'll see what HP says about what they're going to do. I doubt they're going to do anything. They can send me, since I'm going to quit their plan, they can send me cartridges that will work. They can send maybe a code and make these cartridges work because they're HP cartridges. <clears throat> or they can have a bad customer that's going to spread news like they like like i am well, right but now. you know you're not the only one uh, uh, no. uh, everybody i know has had an hp complains about this and says i'll never buy another hp that's right so what uh, turned yeah. me off to him years ago was probably about when i bought this uh three years ago mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. was when i started going to costco and getting them refilled and you bring them back and you put them in the machine and it says mm -hmm. uh, it's empty and it's still got you know that much in it or yeah. it says you know, this does not. It, this machine does not accept that cartridge, and you pump it through and force it through, and it works. But then it says it's empty, and it's still got, you know, quite a bit of ink left in yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I just I, so I mean, I've ha I have a perfectly well working HP <laughs> sitting out in yeah. the out in the foyer, just sitting there because I don't want to use it. And, and mine and, ended up in the garage. So. And if you if you if you don't put in the new cartridges, mm -hmm. let's say okay. What the machine does, it does more than print. Okay, it makes copies, it makes faxes, and does all of that. If you don't have, if a cartridge goes out, and you don't have a cartridge in there to replace it, guess what happens to your to your to your faxing ability and your uh, oh, copying ability? Am I right? None of that works. Huh? Really? Yes. Wow. Really? Wow. Yes. It won't work. All the other yeah. features won't work either. Wow. Jeez. Yeah. See, I got out of it before that subscription y stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck you. But if, if you buy an HP and you mm -hmm. don't sign up for the HP Plus, which doesn't give you anything anyway, well, th then you now. can use any cartridges that anybody puts out. Yep. So, and I basically, in the past 18 months, the first six months is free. They give you starter cartridges. But oh they, yeah, they're, they're going to. The they, past eighteen months, I basically paid what I would have paid retail for their cartridges to start with, and I can never use generics now that I'm part of this. Yeah. Hmm. Right, but if you don't oh. sign up for the HP Plus, you will be able to use the generics. Yep. Yeah. Or just the regular cartridges, and not have to go through this. But there's app. no. But you see, the thing is, there's no warning that HP gives you. Like warning, if you do this, if you sign up for HP Plus, oh, you get this and you get that, but you also aren't able to use anything else but our cartridges. Right. If they said that, then I wouldn't sign up for the HP I Plus. I wouldn't have signed up either. I read, I read the contract pretty thoroughly, so. Mm. Which is and why I, they don't well, tell you. <laughs> yeah, because they told you you wouldn't sign up for it. But you know, companies are doing this all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, services and and so on are horrible. 
Yeah. I, I mean, try and solve a, a problem with services. You know, try and call, try calling uh, any of your of your tech supports for any of these companies. They don't want to talk to you. There was a time when at least you got a phone number you could call. They, they, don't, they don't even hard. have phone numbers you can call anymore. Yeah, they make it almost impossible for you to talk to a real person. Yeah, right. So, you know, hmm. I mean, uh, they make it impossible for you to... And then when you, if you do talk to somebody, like, have you ever tried the chat on those uh, tech support things? That's what I'm talking about. Whoa, oh, boy. Started. I got on tech support the other day with, what was it, BritBox, okay? Oh, no, no, no. Because I had a problem with BritBox, oh. and every time I signed on to it, they wanted me to sign in. Well, you know, usually with most of those apps, you sign in, and they Ooh, then bird. stay signed in, okay? Yeah. But they didn't. So I get online and I'm asking this person, what's wrong? He says, do this, do that. Go get the number of the, uh, of the, of the app, uh, the uh, serial number of the app. Do the, and I'm, I'm going, I finally say, enough is enough. All I want you to do is to tell me how I can do this without having to sign in every time. I finally figured it out personally. I just went on to BritBox online signed in there and then I find out now I don't have to sign it ever again but they didn't tell me that so I'm surprised with all the I people spent an hour hack. what I'm surprised with all the people that hack software and stuff that there's not a online I guess I could look for it how to hack the how to hack the HP plus in order to get it to work with their mm -hmm. cartridges I think it's it's a, it's a hack proof I don't think you can do it, quite nothing's, frankly. Nothing's hack proof. Hmm? I, I don't know. I, I really don't know. I haven't looked into that. We'll see. We'll see what they say tomorrow. Yeah. Well. Let, yeah. If let, they if they even call, who knows? Let us know what they say tomorrow. I would love to I will. know. I will. You know, I would love yeah. to know what they're what they're They'll arguing. probably say, "Do you fish? It makes a good fishing weight." Yeah. <laughs> but I literally was on with BritBox on their chat like an hour it's worthless they want to know who your girlfriend was in third grade before the <laughs> <laughs> yes and i can't even remember who she was so. I, yeah but they ask all kinds of questions that are not pertinent to your product well i'll tell you what i'm getting sick of and i don't know about the rest of you you know if somebody wants to steal my identity go ahead I really don't give it. I like I like bubbles. Yeah, yeah, no. joke, right? Bubble yeah. says I, then I, then I'd ha then he'd have no life. Go ahead. Yeah, there's another guy going around with no <laughs> life. What? Yeah. What do you say? Yeah, there's another guy guy going around with no life. Is the yeah. line? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I you mean, know, the interesting thing is that nowadays social security numbers are used everywhere, and it's, so it's very easy to find somebody. I could probably, if I knew your first name, middle name, and last name. And I'm pretty good at detective work, and your date of birth, probably totally legally, I could find out your social security number in ten or. Well, you minutes. know these these guys aren't what I call uh, brain trusts, okay? No, because there, <laughs> there's a, a thing that Marjorie's been getting a lot, and I get occasionally, and that's a thing that says, uh, uh, "By the way, here's the receipt for the bill for your blah 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 crypto blah 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 yeah. that you did on on." On uh, and then they say on uh, uh, what's the, what's the pay PayPal mm -hmm. on PayPal. PayPal, yeah. <laughs> well, all you have to do is go to PayPal and look yeah. to make sure they didn't charge that to you. You would never come. That's all you have to do. So how these guys think they're putting th anything over on somebody is beyond me. Maybe they call you, that fishing, I think. It's I fishing, yes. and they figure the one in a million might yeah. actually. My mother used to yeah. talk. I used to do it to my mother on the phone, Alex. And I used to say, who are you talking to? And she's doing like service. I used to just hang the phone up on her. It's not enough. Because she, you know, they get somebody like her, an old person. She doesn't know like anything. She couldn't handle anything. Yeah, so like, I tell you know, Marjorie, do not answer any of those things. I used to always hang up on her. I used to take the phone off though yeah. when I used to leave. That's but mom, but we don't even have good, good, uh, good con artists these days. They, they, they no, I mean, they got to come up with it. But, but they, they pray on the week, I think, right? Alex, the older person. Not to say because you're up to date with everything. But there's people who are just totally like, like Alex, I'm going to tell you something. And one thing I find very cool about you, to tell you is that you're up to date with stuff. I speak to people that are younger than you. 
And it's like they can't even work anything. It's like, how do they leave the well, house? Yeah, I, I, I fear for older people because it's really preying on older people who don't understand computers completely. And when they get something like this, like, <laughs> we've got trouble with your service at Chase Manhattan Bank, okay? Uh, click here and uh, resolve your problem. And then they ask you a whole bunch of questions. Before you know it, you know, you're, you've been hacked. Yeah, you've been, yeah exactly. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but it, it's just that we don't make laws against this that are strong enough. Like I'm figuring for these guys who mm. make an old person give away half their money because yeah. they accidentally yeah. clicked on a link, okay? Yeah. I think they should get the death penalty. I mean, that's absolutely. Absolutely. okay. I, I've never been one for the death penalty, but I'll make an exception where that's concerned. How about hung from a tree by their testicles? <laughs> well, I think yeah, that's the death penalty. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. You know, the people, they send out these spam text messages and it yeah. says, your Chase uh, Bank credit card has been hacked. And this is the way you, you fix it, you know? Yeah, they click on and, and I think, I don't have a Chase credit card. Yeah, I got, yeah. I got one of those, and I never had a Chase anything. But, but, then, but, then, but then you that what you realize is that <laughs> you this to 7 million people. Yeah, they're just hoping for one person. Well, 7 well, million but, people, yeah, they're going the to people, find people that the, have it the people and have, that are going to think that it's been happening. I hate to, I'm not ageist, I don't think, when I say this, because at 84, <laughs> it's very hard for me to be ageist. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but I mean, I think that, uh, 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 most of the people who are going to be harmed by this are older people because yeah. uh, they're the people the least but when you say younger people do too they, they just screw them they don't, if they don't know better you know they should be smarter about this but I, I just think that we have done nothing as a government to crack down on this sort of behavior we've just gone well it's bad and we're going to write a law against it well I'm sorry yeah, first you gotta catch the guy. You gotta catch. You know, I was gonna ask Alex. I asked this to my brother because he's into computers and stuff for the city. And do you think Alex that they the uh, the internet companies sell or give out our uh, g uh, emails and they get these spam oh, okay. and build yeah. lists? Because that should be more private. I think you should go after those people. Who 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 are you saying does what? The do you think like FiOS and them give out our emails or Google? I don't think they do. you think do. they farm them out for advertisement? I don't think they do, because I don't think they want to be caught in any kind of a situation where they've been giving out information, your private information. Uh, even if, even, if, even if, it, if it's innocuous. Uh, they, I don't think they want that reputation. Okay. Facebook does it, though. Oh, Somebody Facebook. does it because you get all these unsolicited. Right? Yeah, you get a lot of unsolicited. I mean, a lot, I mean, of, them less, do it. A lot of them do it and they tell you in the yeah, fine he, print. Here's the one it. that Marjorie mentioned. Marjorie was looking up uh, neuropathy because of my feet. And oh, you know, feet, the fact yeah. that I have neuropathy and I have trouble kind of walking a little bit because my we, legs are weaker than they should be and so on. And she look, just looked on for stuff for me that might work. She, she saw some kind of a product that was on Shark Tank, you know? Right. And so she was looking for it. She looked for it and that was that, right? All of a sudden, she's getting email like crazy mm -hmm. watch about neuropathy. Mm -hmm. Okay, but worse than that, and here is the part that is the worst part of it all, all right? She goes to YouTube, and all of a sudden, she has a lot more things about yeah. neuropathy. I was doing so much better. One, yeah. How does, know what you're how does yeah. one speak to the other? That's I, got one, yeah. I got one better. Okay. I'm asking my daughter to do a picture of my car so that I can make up little stickers to hand out to kids. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, no looking for it or anything. All of a sudden, I'm getting ads for stickers on Facebook. They watch what you're doing, yeah. Really? This oh, is they listen to you. 71 Pinto? This is what they listen <laughs> to. Really? Yeah, I think yeah. you're right, Kevin. I, I didn't look for it or nothing. Wow. And all of a sudden, they start, you know, 100 stickers for 15 oh, bucks. Get I think you're listening. Yeah, I do, too. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah, it, because it, I never looked for any, but they showed up. It's, and they've been showing yeah. up for three or four days now. It's terrible. And I just talked to my daughter about it. It's terrible. Yeah. You know. I, use a, I use a VPN everywhere I go. It right doesn't now, matter. It's still going to get through. It's still yeah, going to get I, through. I guess if they're listening. But you know, if I said, 
I want I do, naked I, women at my house. If I do, <laughs> which I'm just, I, do, I think, uh, quite frankly, quite frankly, I think you VPNs are a big waste of time too. No, nah, I don't think so because yeah. I get I get ads in in, in whatever uh, language they speak in Sweden because my VPN takes me to Sweden. And so they have. So no you're getting idea. the ads. They're just in a different language. Right, but yeah. I don't understand them, so I throw them away. Right. You know. So, yeah, I mean, you know, my computer is the same way. It runs on the VPN all the time, and you know, and I've got it set to New York, and so I get restaurant deals for New York. So I know the VPN's working. Well, yeah, but I don't like the VPN because it, you know, it does. Uh, there is a value to your computer knowing where you are mm -hmm. you know in in just things like dealing with banks and so on yeah. uh, if you get if you deal with a bank and then you go on the vpn you have to almost reestablish completely yeah. who you are with the bank yeah i only have one program that does that so and i and i know where to turn the vpn off get on and then turn the vpn back on at Citibank. so no problem when i start doing uh, financial stuff with them it's going to be through the vpn well i'll, I'll, I'll tell you i'll tell you okay let me i have uh what's what's the uh major uh, vpn company nord. nord 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 so i have nord okay somehow i got signed up for another version of nord which is the more expensive version uh -huh. okay now i wanted to get rid of one of them and there was nobody i could get a hold of at nord to get rid of one of them yeah, now tell me to... about this is a company that's supposed to be all for security and that how did i wind up be they should have said hey you've got two accounts here well do you want to get rid of one of them no they don't do that at all and then <laughs> when you get a hold of them and say how do i get rid of it there's no way to get rid of it is was one under one name and one no under they were both name? under the same name oh wow so you want to talk about a ripoff company try nord sometime I don't know. They uh, they're based in Panama. Oh, okay. And if you wanna if you wanna talk to the people of Nord, try and do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You All gotta right. do it in an email or the online chat. Yeah, but so you've made the internet safer for me from other people, but not from you. You know. <laughs> do you ever have any troubles like this, Tom? You know. No, I don't have a VPN. I mean, but do you? Do you do you have any of these? Do you have any of these problems where you get this very suspicious mail and you don't know what to do with it? Uh, by Mac knows what to do with it. Put it in the junk. Yeah. <laughs> Put exactly. it in the junk folder. No, but you know, yeah. but I got to tell you, Marjorie a couple of times has fallen for this. You know, she's fallen big time for this. Uh, by the way, here comes Don Giller, and I know this has got to be Don Giller. Either that, or if it's a phony Don Giller, I don't care. Even a phony Don Giller is. Hello, Don. Are you there? Oh, don't tell me. Let me just make sure it's. Uh, let me put my face up here. Sure it is. Oh, there, there it okay. is. There he oh, is. Oh, this Beatles oh, cover that. again. Oh, there porno, he is. porno. This isn't a rerun. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it is now. <laughs> Uh, we're talking about HP printers and VPNs. I'm sure yeah. you have an opinion. I wait. Well, I waited till you, till you exhausted the discussion on. Oh, HP okay, printers. good, good. <laughs> good luck with that. Because uh, I'm because my image writer still works. So your image writer. <laughs> your, your dot matrix. Dot matrix. Yeah. VPNs. Uh, I I love them. Yeah. Um, let's say that you wanna. You want to let's say you want to see you want to see a YouTube video from Canada and for some reason, yeah, you can't because you're not you're not from Canada. So you set up your VC, VPN to Ottawa so mm -hmm. you can you can watch the video. Absolutely. And you can disable it wherever, whenever you want. You know, yep. you know that, that as as uh, as was already said. You know, you don't have well, to keep I, it on. I tried it one time with uh, England with some show I wanted to watch in England, and I turned on the VPN and I put it aimed it at london right Ta -da. and i was yeah. able to watch a show but i you know i had to watch it on my computer and i don't like watching shows on my computer i like watching shows on my tv set so, so what's really better is 
When you the last time I flew somewhere, I've had this VPN for five. By the years, way, right? somebody or, should explain what VPN is to people who virtual don't know. private network. It it, it shows yeah. your IP address is not your true one. It's the one you're renting through VP, through whatever the. VPN it doesn't company. use your local IP address. It, that, it that's goes right. to so a they VPN. can't trace you. Yeah. So that so I, I looked at an airline ticket from here to Chicago to go visit family, and they wanted. I don't know, I, this is five, six years ago. They wanted $600 round trip from the Bay Area. So I thought, well, let, let's change this. I'm not gonna book it. Let's change it to New Mexico or Mississippi or something. I changed it to Mississippi. Now the ticket's half the cost. Really? Yeah, yeah. Because, because the cost of it, you know, they figure people have more money in the San Francisco Bay Area than they do in Mississippi. It was then you're going to drive to Mississippi to get the ticket. Oh, is that it? <laughs> no, you don't. You just, I could have bought it online. Yeah. Well, with a Mac, you just go into incognito mode. You go into private mode when you're doing Same that. thing. That's what a VPN does is incognito. No, incognito is completely well, different, like isn't it? From LA to oh, Chicago from here and then... Private browsing is what they call it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you set up to do that and you're okay, right? Uh, That's what well, I found. Yeah. <clears throat> You're only, pissed, you're only pissed at Nord because you had two accounts somehow. But no, no, know. but I mean, I, if I have two accounts, a, a good company should say, hey, we noticed here you have two accounts that are, uh, you know, one's a higher version of, of the lower you. one you've got, and, and, and then they're going to get, they get, you know, they ask you if you I, I, wanted it and that a good, way. And a good company will say, we noticed you've had it for four months, we've been charging you for it, so we'll give you four months on your, rather a refund, or we'll give you six months of extra yeah. VPN time or something like that to make it right. So I you had know, are they charging uh, you for both accounts? Yes. Oh, heck. I buy my VPN. <laughs> and, and try and call them and you can't get a hold of anybody. Oh, no, no. Nobody answers the phone in Panama, so. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. where they're based at. What, but you so know So did what? you hear Willie Mays died? Yeah, yeah really, he, thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. sucks. I'm real sad about that. Uh, wait a minute. He's 93. He's 93. I know he was, but it know, bums me up. Some of us are old enough to actually seen him play. Yeah. I saw him play I many times. I saw times. him play, too. Well, hey, don't, listen, anybody is, anybody is from the Bay Area, you don't, That's from you don't, my don't, damn don't childhood knock, don't right knock there. Willie yeah. Mays, okay? Makes me feel old. They still, they still have the statue of Willie Mays at... Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, at Oracle, yeah. Yeah. Is it what's it now these days? It's Oracle today, yeah. Oh, it's Oracle. Now. <laughs> yeah. Who right. knows what it'll be tomorrow? Whoever buys it next. Yeah, I, remember, I remember when it was Pac Bell and I think before yeah. that it was what was it initially? Yeah. Uh, it was initially Pac Bell. Yeah, originally it was Pac Bell. Adam yeah. Coleco. And it was AT and T. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> and it went to Oracle. Phones gave it up and took a computer. What, so what's new and exciting, uh, Geller? Uh, see, does, does anyone or everyone here ever hear of a, a, a pianist named C Cecil Taylor? Yes. Yeah, I've heard of him. Yes, jazz Blues, isn't he? Blues player? Blues pianist? Yeah. yeah a, a free jazz, but but a classically okay. trained free jazz pianist. He died, I think, in, tw in like 2018? Yeah, 2018. Now we're gonna, Now we're going to cry over it? Well, you mentioned Willie Mays. I um, no, I didn't. <laughs> did, but Willie Mays just died today or yesterday, so yeah, yeah but he died at ninety-three. That's, I should right. live so long. Okay. Anyway, what were you saying, uh, Gelmer? Uh, uh, <laughs> Dan Gelmer. Call me Dan Gelmer. Okay, Dan Gelmer. What? Yeah. what? Um, he was. Uh, I I I went to Antioch uh, from sixty-nine to seventy-three. Mm -hmm. uh, there'll be a quiz. Um, and Cecil was at that in 71 he was the artist in residence in Ma at University of Wisconsin in Madison mm -hmm. and he led he led his own quartet called the Cecil Taylor unit yeah and he also organized uh, a, a jazz ensemble in in Madison uh, called the, the Lake Mendota players they I have something it. I used to call the Alex Bennett unit, but it's another thing altogether. <laughs> yeah, well, they've, they've got your picture in the bathroom. Um, <laughs> I know this guy. So anyways, you were saying. So in a April 71, 
they came down to Antioch to perform. And, and, and I was working at the, I wasn't really working, but at any rate, the radio station asked me to, to take the concert. And there were two concerts that day. There was the afternoon concert by the Lake Mendota players. Mm -hmm. That lasted around two and a half hours. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, in which uh, after, the, after it was over, I made a dub for them. And then that evening, Cecil Taylor came, out, came on to perform. And that was an a, a hour 47 minute concert. Yeah. And I stayed up all night, made dubs for the station, for, for Cecil. Um, I kept the masters. Um, in the morning, uh, th th there are other players, uh, Sam Rivers, very famous saxophonist mm -hmm. uh, and flautist, jazz flautist. Uh, uh, Jimmy Lyons, uh, 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 alto sax player, and the drummer was Andrew Cyril. He, he's the only one still alive. Um, so I met up with them the next morning to give them a copy of the concert, uh, which is, I realize, neither here nor there. I kept the Masters, hadn't played it in 53 years. I took it out. Uh, I found it a, a, a couple of months ago. Uh, another long story, which I'm going to, uh, well, we have, what, oh, nine minutes. I can fill that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I had to get uh, workable reel-to-reel -reel decks. Uh, they arrived uh, on Saturday. I digitized the tapes. Um, and what I didn't remember was that the, the, the Cecil Taylor concert, the sound was spectacular. It was it was the finest recording that I'd ever heard of these people playing, um, and so I put I, I I made a video. I had to find a whole bunch of visuals to to uh, to add to the to the audio, and I put it up uh, Monday morning around 3 a.m. and it it has not gone viral. One what would one wouldn't expect it to. Right. But the people who know this stuff were amazed. Wow. This is on reel to reel, I take it. Yeah, um, because it's a newly heard concert by one of the last times that Sam Rivers played in this in this in the quartet. Mm. Again, the, the the sound is impeccable. Um, I'm, I'm getting emails and and messages from jazz aficionados who are who are just thrilled that this stuff exists. Um, and uh, we have another eight minutes, so I'll stop. Well, I got to tell you, uh, who I recorded, when I was in the Navy, they sent me over to the Coconut Grove to mm -hmm. record Sammy Davis Jr. Mm -hmm. And for years, I had a copy of that tape. I don't know where it is now any longer. I may have it. You might have it. It was, it was slightly over-modulated. But for the most part, it was a yeah, vacation. yeah, it was. Uh, it was it was peaking. What time? Oh, of day yeah, was you that have on? a copy of it, I imagine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. Hmm. You're asking uh, what time? I asked. Well, you're 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 so good with times and dates. What time of day was that done? Night. Mm -hmm. Oh well, the, the Lake Mendota was it when the afternoon and and Cecil's concert was that evening. That evening. Okay. okay. Are, are you satisfied now, Alan? I am. Well, okay, this good. Guy is, this guy has a memory, a great memory. Yeah. You know, not bad for 40 years. You, you know, I, I can't I remember got, your name. I, I got to tell you, every, I, I'm amazed. Every now and then I pick, I mention Geller's name to somebody. And they go, of course I know who that is. Mm. You are well, very yeah, well they, known. They know, you, are know. Ver, you are very well known, my friend, because people they, know, see that name on YouTube like crazy. They, they know Geller. They don't know Giller. <laughs> Giller, I mean. I mean Don Giller, Don Ge Ge Don Gelmer, Don Gelmer. Dan that's Gilmer, what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Gilmer, yeah. Other <laughs> thing, you're, you're talking about uh, 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 troll calling. Um, I uh, troll phone calls, and and I would I haven't gotten them in, in a while. Uh, a guy with an accent. They all, that you know, they all call from under a bridge. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. And they said, you know, you're having a, a problem with your PC, and we want to help you fix it. Yeah. And, which, which of course means that they want me to give them codes and 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 stuff so they can get into the computer and steal yep. steal whatever they can or infect it. Our so best. I'd say, 
So first of all, I don't have a PC. Well, I I'll keep them, them I keep them on forever. Well, hey, that's what I do. Them. I said yeah. I said, look, I, you know, my my grand my grandson gave me this. I don't know how this works. Please help me. And I just act like a complete idiot, just wasting their time. Well, I, when, when I'm through with them after a while, after I've wasted their time for maybe 10, 20 minutes, I go, oh, yeah. by the way, you know, I have a Mac. That's what I'm using. <laughs> <laughs> and then they start getting pissed off, and I'll tell them, you called me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, so. you know, it was like, it was like my friend. Uh, 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 Checky. No, no. Uh, my friend uh, Chuck Farnham, who uh, whenever uh, Seventh-day Adventist would come to the door of his home uh, to try and sell him, sell him Bibles or whatever they go to door to door selling, he would open the door stark naked. <laughs> <laughs> he would see them out there and he'd just take his clothes off and answer the door. I, I, I had a roommate that when they come knocking on the door, he would just tell them, oh, I'm sorry, I'm gay. Yeah. <laughs> and they would never come back again. Either that, or I, you know, with people who are trying to you do something with you with a with a spam call, I just simply start swearing at them and calling them names, and they say, uh, "Well, that isn't very nice." I said, "Hey, I didn't call you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you called me, pal." But anyway, so, eh. Oh, hey, I'm looking. I got about two minutes left before I got to play the theme. So Geller, who? <laughs> Geller, <laughs> you want to go tell us that long story? <laughs> uh, I forgot. Well, but, now's the perfect time. But I got to tell you, Geller, every time I mention your name to somebody, they go, "Oh yeah, I know who he is." Yeah, like who? My sister. I mentioned it to my my uh, uh, ex producer uh, Albert Reynoso. I said Don Don uh, Don Geller. He goes, "Of course, I know Don Geller." Yeah, we've been buddies for a long time. Yeah, you've been buddies for a long time. The whole world knows to, who you are. He used to produce one of my radio shows. Yeah, right, of course. <laughs> anyway, uh, so uh, let's see here. With one minute left, what can we say that hasn't been said already tonight? Remember, so, uh, I, found, I found the Doors autograph, but, I, but maybe this isn't, you know, this was a follow-up to last Friday, so maybe we can put this on. Yeah, well, oh, Last Friday, I watched the video. I wasn't on it. I watched it. Did you notice how red you were, Alex? How red I was? Yeah. The, I, nobody mentioned it, so maybe it was just the replay. No, I replayed I, it over I, the weekend. Well, it could be your your computer. Could be, but you're not red now. No, but I, I I'm not any. I haven't changed it any different. And nobody than else the on the day. show was out of out of color. It well, I'll, I'll go look at last last last, uh, last Fridays and see how how. I mean, red. it doesn't really matter, but you were very normally you adjust your color, but you were pretty red. Well, I red. I've been out in the sun a lot. How's that? Okay, there oh, you go. Okay. That's good. Yeah. Alex is a well-read person. So I'm a well-read person. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was about ready to get around to that joke, but thank you for beating it to me. Uh, hey, uh, Tom, always great to have you here. You know, I uh, I always, whenever I see your name on the list here, before I click the the, uh, the thing to bring everybody on on Zoom, I go, wow, this is going to be a good one. Thank you, jo Tom. I really one thing it. One thing I noticed, it used to have your Zoom link on your uh, YouTube page, and I couldn't find it. I had to go to your uh, uh, website the, to find on it. On the YouTube page? I didn't know it's Yeah, there. it used to be at the bottom. Yeah, it's, it's there. It was, it's there. Yeah, it's so there. I got in. I couldn't find it. But yeah, anyway. Yeah. It's there the right comments. now. I look at it. It's right there. Okay. okay it drops great. down. Yeah. They stopped okay. producing it in California. Yeah. 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 Well, that's okay. I still was anyway, able to find it. I went to your real web page. So and, that's okay. and you're on a PC. That's Thank why. you, Alan. Thank no, you, Charlie. Mac. We have not heard one word from Jeff. <laughs> Say something, Jeff. Uh, your your his, uh, your mic his, is his off. mic is off. <laughs> anyway. Uh, <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, Good night, everybody. <laughs> He's been talking nonstop. <laughs> Thank you so much, Tony. Thank you to Kevin. And, of course, the fabulous John uh, Don Gelman. Uh, my, name is, my name is Dick Hertz. Dick Hertz, right. <laughs> Dick Hertz. Yes. Uh, Friend of anyway, Hugh Just Hole. Everybody, everybody, <laughs> give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you, okay? There we go, folks. There they go. And here I come to say goodbye 
to all you people out there. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, by the way, uh, Amy Emanuel is next. She's going to be here with The Intersection. You can call her on uh, Skype at GabNet Live. I'll see you again tomorrow. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Night, everybody.